Hi, welcome. We've got another video for you all about Casey today. And today is going to be all about sequencing. Now, sequencing is a very popular kind of skill that many people will teach their children. And for Casey's purposes, the reason why we chose sequencing was to help with some of his language processing, i.e. listening to multiple parts of information, putting it in the right order, and being able to execute you know, some different tasks by either watching or listening to what we're saying. So I'm going to take you today through a bit of a journey of where we began with him and what we've been doing with his sequencing. In this first video, you're going to see where we began, where we all started. And we chose numbers in the beginning because he really loves numbers and alphabets. And we wanted to see whether he would be able to sequence something in a very simple way. So you're going to see in this video, we place out three numbers. And underneath the numbers are three uh, words. It says first, then, and last, which he can read. I'm not sure if he really understands what those words mean, but they're on the table. And above we place three numbers, and we ask him to then, from a pile of other numbers, put them in the right order that correspond with the sequence. Now, you'll see he doesn't do so well in this clip. Let's say, take a look. Are you ready? You're going to pick numbers that are, that are the same as Ivy. Okay? Okay, Ivy go first. One. Four. Eight. Okay, can you put yours? No, hang on Casey, the first one is not... Okay, so I'm not really sure he knows what to do. Uh, I don't think he knows he needs to be copying the sequence. He might think he's, you know, just putting numbers down randomly. Uh, I'm not sure he knows that he should start from the left and work to the right and understand the whole process of what we're doing. So in the next video, you will see Ivy makes an adjustment and she begins to teach him and, and how she does this, rather than just tell him the answer and what to do, She's quite clever and she breaks the task down and she just places one number at a time. So you'll see her place the first one, he gets the corresponding one, she gets the next one and the next one. Ready? Yeah. I think go first. Can you put? Yes, three. All right, so this helped him to get some understanding. Uh, we also did that with the alphabets to make sure he didn't just only think that was what we do with the numbers, but to get a bit more of a general sense of what to do with other kinds of formats of things. And so we did alphabet. Hang on, wait, wait. Yes, Is that correct? <gasps> yes, they are all the same! Correct, correct! From that! <laughs> okay, now at this stage, he's really just copying the sequence, isn't he? He doesn't have to remember anything or really think about what order those things go in because it's already out there and he can always see it. So it's not really sequencing at this point and it's not really him remembering or sort of applying what he's seen or, or heard uh, and using those things to sequence it in order. But it's a beginning point. He certainly knows at this point to start at the bottom and where to put the things and work in an order, which is a good start. So you'll see in the next video, Ivy now makes it a little bit more difficult in that she shows him the first two, but she just, quickly shows him the last one and turns it upside down so he can't see it. So now he does actually have to remember the sequence and remember which one to put in order. Because I'm going to cover up one. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Yes. Go. Hang on. H. Okay, you put Oh, it's wrong. Yeah, no, it's upside down. Okay, you put it. H, H, E, E, E. <gasps> see, let's see. Ta-da! Yeah! In 
this video, you're going to see that we've moved on to now showing him not just the numbers and the alphabets, we're now showing him pictures of objects. And you'll see in this video, Ivy's now hiding two of the objects, and one of the pictures is still available for him to see. So it's making it a little bit more tricky and a little bit more difficult. Yes. Okay, we're going to put them in order. You can put it here if you want to. Cherry. Okay, let's see. Snowman. Fish. And cherry. Flip it over. Flip it over. Ta cherry. Got it. All right. Okay, so he's doing well. Now, this is the final video of this sequence, and now he's learning to do all three objects. So we tell him the three, we show him which ones they are. And he's got to go find, put them in the right order. Fish. 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 Dice. Dice. Back. Back. You go. Fish. Dice. Dice. Back. Let's see. Okay, now at this point, I noticed something that one of the things that we teach students to really help them with their sequencing skills, language processing skills, is we teach a skill called rehearsal, or basically teaching the children that when we've given the answer, they repeat back. So you'll see in the next video, Ivy will do some actions, and then at the end of the sequence, she'll say, what did I just do? Very quickly to make sure he can remember and then say what it is. The other thing she has him do is that as he does the sequencing, she also teaches him to say what it is as he does it. So for example, if we were teaching a student to get the ball, bus and car, as the student's getting it, the student would say to themselves, oh, the ball and the bus and the car. This really, really helps people to remember things and to retain the sequence of the events as it's been said to him, it's a very, very useful skill that we teach. And so in this video, you'll see Ivy teaching him how to do the rehearsal and how to be saying as he's putting down, which I think really helps uh, Casey. You'll also notice in this video, we've moved away from showing the pictures to Ivy now doing some actions with objects which he has to sequence. Here's the apple. And last, we do like it. All right, you put it. First, eat the apple. First, eat the apple. And then, kiss the lion. And then, kiss the lion. Last, we do like it. Last, build. Now, one of the problems we had when we started doing the actions with the objects is that he always then starts to do the actions himself. So Ivy would do the sequence, and then every time he picked up the object to put it down, he would start eating it or brushing his hair. And one of the problems with that was that at this point, we wanted him to do it quickly because his memory fades quite rapidly, as does everybody's. The longer that he has to do it after the demonstration, the less likely he will remember the right order and the right sequence. So in this video, you'll see Ivy's work very hard on him, not kissing the elephant or doing those things, but just when it's his turn to put it out, he does it quickly, says what it is, and just puts the objects down. Ready? Okay, what happened just now? First, cut the pie. Good. And then, kiss the elephant. And then, kiss the elephant. Last, drink some water. Last, drink some water. All right, we now move to having him do actions, watching Ivy do some actions again. Uh, we've got no objects now, and we're now using some pictures of actions, which is a bit more abstract uh, and a bit more difficult. Let's see, he's now up to, again, three cards. 
watching a sequence and then finding the right corresponding actions. Movie time! Action! Action! The wheels on the bus go round and round. The Ivy is singing! Ivy is eating! Ivy is drinking! Okay, cut! You put it! Ivy is First, Ivy is singing. First, Ivy is singing. And now, Ivy is eating. And then, Ivy is eating. Now, the Ivy is drinking. <gasps> make it more difficult, what we do now is we take away those picture cards and now, so he has got no choices to make, uh, he has to just remember. So Ivy, as you'll see in the video, demonstrates three actions and then she's going to ask him, so what happened? And then he'll remember, oh, I did this and I did that and I did this. This is much more difficult than the other one because with the other one he's got a lot of prompts and cues because he can see the pictures. So this is much more difficult but he does very well. And go. go. Cut. What happened just now? First, clapping. First, Afi clap the hands. And then, Afi eat And then, Afi eat something. And not. Sleeping. Now, up to this point, a lot of these tasks seem kind of perfunctory. They don't seem to have much sort of real functional use uh, other than really teaching these sort of skills. So I wanted to show you one last video of sort of where you might use this skill or how you might apply this in a sort of daily life. So we do a little recall task and we take him into the playground. We play a few different things and then Ivy brings him into the uh, therapy room and asks him, Hey, what did we just do? And he's able to recall those events in a nice order and explain kind of like what he's been doing, which I think is really, really good and very, very useful for him. Go down the slide. Good. Wow. And then we're going to... Okay. Wow. And then last, we're going to... Go on the roller coaster! Wow! There we go! <laughs> okay. Okay, let's go see what we did. Okay, you just play with Toby and then he asks some questions. What did you guys play just now? First, go up. Go down with the, like the slide. First, you play the slide. And then, kick the ball. And then you kick the ball. Last, go to roller coaster. <gasps> really? You had so much fun and you're still able to tell. So that's a pretty in-depth look at some of the sequencing that we do here. I know there's lots of other ways we do sequencing as well, but this is what we've been doing with Casey up to now. Uh, I really hope you liked the video today. If you thought it was useful, please share it. Uh, there are many other people that might find it helpful, and we'll see you again on Friday. Thank you very much.